Hello guys, SFP here, and welcome to the 8th episode of my FIFA career mode for DC United. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. I know I have. I started actually the weekend with uh, my little sister watching the Cinderella movie, the live action one, and I gotta say it was pretty, pretty good. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I would have, especially since I'm not the demographic, obviously. But it was a very charming movie. Anyways... Saturday has been filled with MLS games that I've been watching, and this week itself has been very dull, at least for the MLS uh, league, or I guess the Major League, so uh, Major League Soccer, and it seems that Porter's back, so that's good, we have another player back from injury, and this week has been relatively boring because most of the games have been ending in 0-0 zero -zero draws, and I don't know what it says about the league, I don't know if it's just... Because it's the beginning of the season, many teams don't want to risk as much. They'd rather go for the safe one point than risk it all and going for all three. Or it's just that the offense just doesn't seem to be clicking at the moment. But anyways, most of them have been 0-0 draws. And then I think the last game on Saturday, which was the uh, Los Angeles Galaxy versus Houston Dynamo, ended up in a 1-1 draw. So at least that's that's an improvement there. Anyways, and obviously on Sunday, which is today, there will be two more DC, uh, two more MLS games. DC United versus New York Red Bulls, which I'm hoping to see the second half, only because El Clasico is today as well. And I've been debating, and some of you might find that stupid, debating to, uh, whether I want to see El Clas the Foley, El Clasico, or DC United, New York Red Bulls game. But I, last year, I decided to go for the MLS game, so this year I'm going for the El Clasico game and then just catching whatever is left of the MLS game. And then the San Jose Earthquakes will be starting, or strutting, I should say, and, and showing off their new stadium against the Chicago Fire, and the San Jose Earthquakes couldn't have chosen a better opponent to... Uh, speaking about... Uh, Starting, the Chivas USA team just managed to score here 1-0, and it's a little embarrassing because everyone knows uh, the Chivas USA team isn't exactly the cream of the crop when it comes to MLS. Anyways, as I was saying before, the Chicago Fire right now seem to be, I want I don't want to say the worst team in MLS, but they're very, they're the most disappointing team, and, and right now I, can, I think San Jose can manage the win. And start off strong in their new stadium. So that's that's good for them. If they would like any opponent at the moment. Excluding she was USA obviously because they don't exist anymore. Then Chicago Fire would be the ideal team. Anyways focusing on this game. Which I'm already down 1-0. And I'm passing it to Fabi Spindola. And, and I pass it to Fabi. And Fabi missed it just wide. Just off a couple inches. And he should have had that. But I guess the goalkeeper kind of reduces the amount of space for him to shoot at. Anyways, five minutes spinner here with Silva. Silva shoots, and again, it's wide. It's wide. But anyways, for those of you guys watching, who are you rooting for for El Clasico? Are you a Barca fan? Or are you a Madrid fan? Or are you just a casual watcher and you really don't care who wins as long as it's a great game? And here the first half ends with a 1-0 deficit on my part. And anyways, I actually used to be just a casual observer of uh, Classico until like I guess I started getting older and, and Basically identifying myself with one of the other teams. I won't say which, but if you guys are interested, I'm actually going to make a new career mode later on. Not not now, because I'm focusing on this DC United career mode. But maybe two or three, two or three seasons later, I will also be doing another uh, career mode focusing on one of these Spanish Giants. And that will probably be more commercial, because more people are obviously know about Barcelona and Real Madrid as opposed to DC United which is probably one of the reasons I'm not getting too many views but this is my team and I, I want to enjoy what I'm doing and so that's why I chose this team and hopefully I'll be able to get a goal and no the corner kick there did not go or not connect well with Boswell 
Basel is usually a beast when it comes to to corner kicks. Anyways, I don't think I'll be able to get the tie here, guys. It's 1-0, and there's only three minutes left. And here we go with Arieta. Arieta shoots, and a nice save there by, I want to say, uh, Dan Kennedy, who is now in FC Dallas, and FC Dallas has decided to put him on the bench, which I would, at the beginning of the season, I would have questioned why they put Dan Kennedy on the bench. He's such a quality goalkeeper, especially all those years he's played in. Um, the Chivas USA team, but right now Chris Seitz has been doing an awesome job, and he's been really stepping up. You know, he's not the same goalkeeper who kind of flundered in in RSL and then uh, basically lost his starting spot for the Philadelphia Union. He's actually matured quite a bit, and has come. He's become a goalkeeper in his a good goal, excuse me a good goalkeeper in his own right. And here I'm actually trying to sign a couple more players here. Pedro Gales, Galesi, a goalkeeper, a center back, Arturo Mina, who I've actually been scouting, guys. And I know I didn't show it on my video, but I've actually been scouting a couple. If you guys are annoyed by this, and I'll make sure I, I put the scouting on the video next time. I just figured my videos are long enough that you don't need to see everything, but if for some reason you are uncomfortable with this, I will make sure to add it on to the next video. And as this, the news goes, shooting boots missing for Fabian Spindola, which isn't good. You know, you don't want a striker to go through a, a drought because it hurts his confidence. And apparently, these players did not like that I, I don't think I put any roles for them. And that's typically the way I go because I don't want to put them in a role that I can't accomplished you know there's there's this team right now the reason i'm switching squads so often is because there are a lot of players that are in squad rotation or are an important player and there's not enough to put all the important players on the field so i tend to switch a lot which is why i typically put rolf in and arieta or, or what's his name estrada because typically those players are important players and if i'm not going to have them constantly in the starting 11 i might as well at least save them up and use them in the second half that way they remain happy and that's my main goal here I want most players to be happy I know a lot of youtubers don't do that and you know that's their own opinion I actually want all of my players to at least be okay with with their involvement in the club particularly because I want to avoid the uh, front office selling them without my permission which tends to happen with players who are unhappy at the moment and I managed to sign the goalkeeper Galassi who I believe is Peruvian which is an extra benefit for me and look Eddie Johnson is finally happy with his productivity or not productivity but the amount of time he's getting on the playing field <coughs> excuse me and here we go again with Toronto FC which I believe we played Toronto last episode and I guess we'll play him again. Today it's DC United against Toronto. So here we are midway through the season and what a game we have. Time for one of these guys. See they're in third place and I'm in sixth place. Right now, if the playoffs started, I wouldn't be in it. Which wouldn't be good, it would shorten our season. Which in many respects would be bad because obviously you guys want me at least I I would assume you guys want me to be in the playoffs. I know I want to be in the playoffs. But Thinking positive on if I don't make the playoffs, and that just means I'll finish this season a lot quicker and I'll be able to go on to the next one right away. I do hope that the stadium situation gets fixed. So I'd really love to see MLS stadiums in FIFA, or at least in, in the American version of the FIFA. I don't, you know, they don't need to put the MLS um, stadiums in the European or, or South American versions, because honestly, who's going to use them? But I'd like to see... Well, I, I was going to say RFK, but obviously RFK is not going to be here for much longer. But maybe a BMO field, that would be a nice stadium to see. 
I know the Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken, the Vancouver Whitecaps Stadium, BC Place, is in FIFA. And I don't think I've, I think I've seen it a couple times actually this season. And it really looks nice. Here we go with Toronto with the corner kick. And will they connect? No, Jack, DC now manages it to get it out. And then Bradley with a shot, but no, Bill Hamid saves it very easily. And Toronto FC seem to be uh, grilling us here, and they managed to score off of Bradley, I want to say. And yes, it is Michael Bradley, and it's a well-deserved it's a well-deserved lead because they've actually been on our heels the whole time. We haven't managed to get much uh, out of our efforts and haven't managed to get on their side of the field that often either. So it's a well-deserved 1-0 lead by Toronto. So, you know, hopefully this lead won't last long and we'll be back in the game in no time. Michael Bradley with his third goal of the season. And we go with the spindle. The spindle shoots, and it's wide for like the bajillionth time. Got to those shooting boots there, Fabi. Fabi the spindle has been on a rut, and I don't mean in real life. I mean like in the game at the moment. Johnson, and a nice save there by Bednick. Right now, Fabi Spindle hasn't been playing for DC United because of his suspension. And oh my God, Altador shoots. And luckily, my defender, which I want to say Boswell, it was Boswell who kind of got made uh, Altador shoot it in an uncomfortable position. But Fabio Spindle right now, I believe he's, he's serving like a three to five game suspension because of his antics in the last game of the season. And Fabio Spindle shoots nothing. Johnson shoots, and it's horribly shot, Johnson. The goal was wide open. A nice corner kick and nothing comes out of it. And that's the end of the first half. 1-0 for Toronto FC. Doing the usual, putting in Perry Kitchen, and then Chris Rolf in for Pawnees, or is it DeLeon this time? Oh no, it's DeLeon. Surprised I didn't put Estrada or Arieta this, season, this time. And Estrada, oh I did put Estrada I guess. Shoots Estrada. Oh, and a nice save by Bednick there. There's Pawnees had the ball, but he got pushed off by Jackson. Estrada, Estrada finds Kitchen. Kitchen cuts, shoots, Silva, and what a nice score by Luis Silva in the last minutes of the game. To save that one point in the Barra Brava is going wild. That was a nice shot. Nice shot there by Silva, who I believe is still injured this season. And it's quite a shame because him and Fabi make a awesome duo. And so far, DC United has gone into victory against Montreal, but I don't take much stake in that because Montreal have been focusing on the CONCACAF Champions League, which actually, for any Montreal fans watching, congrats on that 2-0 victory against Salah Halenzer. I'm really rooting for you guys, and it's going to be a little weird in some respects, and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, I guess, even though I just said respect and disrespectful in the same sentence. And I think that's the end of the game. 1-0, I mean 1-1, tie for both teams. Anyways, I was saying it, it's going to be a little weird, especially if uh, Montreal actually manages to win this edition of the Champions League. And they might actually do it, because right now, if I'm not mistaken, Herediano managed to get a 3-0 victory against America in Costa Rica. Now, playing in Mexico is obviously going to be a, a hard thing to do for the Costa Rican team, but as long as they don't lose by two goal, or more than two goals, then they're in. And I think that's not an impossible feat to do for the Costa Rican team. Mediano has been very good in these last couple of seasons. I know they're not a Saprisa. They don't have the recognition or name that Saprisa has, 
but they're a good team in their own right, and I think they can squeak out, squeak out the uh, into the next round. I don't think they'll win, obviously. I don't even think they'll tie. I think it'll be a close uh, score, maybe a a two one or not a two one, a two zero or a three one four two something. Actually, no four two. They won't be able. To, actually, no, they will be able to go a four two something in that extent. I think they'll they'll squeak in, and then Montreal winning two zero against Alajuelense. Excuse me, Alajuelense is a great result for them. However, I don't think it's a score that gives too much confidence. I don't know about you Montreal fans, but I I particularly don't feel too confident with a two zero lead. Everyone says that a two zero lead is the most dangerous lead to have because once the opponent scores one goal, they go into that momentum and. Managed to get the tie because the uh, team on the lead tends to be complacent and, and have a false sense of security. And so Montreal, if Montreal can get one goal, just one goal in Costa Rica, I think they're in. Just one goal. At least don't at least don't pull off a DC United in Montreal, please. That that was very disappointing and a very pathetic showing. I don't want to blame Dykstra, and I know I've mentioned this before already. I don't want to blame Dykstra for it, but he just had a horrible game, and, and we really need to build Hamid for that one. Anyways, enough about that. Montreal, again, congratulations. I'm rooting for you guys. I know MLS is rooting for you guys. So please go to the final and finally get MLS on the map or be the first MLS team to win this edition of the CONCACAF uh, or at least this change into the CONCACAF Champions League. And I mean, we all, I don't know if you guys know, but DC United and Galaxy have won the previous edition, and by edition I mean the CONCACAF League of Champions, I believe. I know it's, in Spanish it's called the CONCACAF Copa de Campeones, but I'm not sure how you say it in English. Um, I know DC United has won it once in 99, I want to say, 98, 99, and I know Galaxy won in 2000 or 2001. However, back in those days there wasn't, well at least back when DC won it, there was no rendition of the Club World Cup. And when Galaxy won it, there was, but that year something happened. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember. But they were unable to do the uh, the Club World Cup that year, and so Galaxy weren't able to represent MLS after winning uh, the Conca Champions. And here we go with my B team here. And Houston Dynamo. Houston Dynamo managed to get a tie this week. Or yesterday, actually, against the... Um, What's it called? They're going to say like Galaxy. Wow, I'm drawing blanks, guys. I apologize. And right now, I'm not sure how I feel about Owen Coyle. He obviously has ideas. He's changed the system a little bit, but I'm not sure it's for the better. And I'm not sure what you Houston Dynamo fans think. Uh, I think at the moment, obviously, it's too soon to tell. But give it, give it, a, give it at least maybe 10 more games, and I think we'll get a feel for what his intentions are, what he's trying to do with his team, and how he's trying to play. But right now, Houston Dynamo, Dynamo fans enjoy that you're down 1-0 at the moment. Thanks in part to Luis Silva again, or is it? No, it's Vela Verde, my new player here. What a nice debut here, scoring. A nice header, and there was nothing. I think it's Willis. I think it's Willis. Speaking about Willis, you know, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in part because I think he's Willis is a quality player in, that Houston Dynamo has. He's been great in D.C. He's had a little bit of uh, disappointing matches here and there, but overall he's been a solid goalkeeper and one who should be a starting goalkeeper. However, Tyler Derrick has been owning that spot at the moment, and except for that last game against Orlando City where he had that blunder, but I'm glad to see that Owen Coyle hasn't lost confidence in him, and, and he's been rewarded with a tie. Very good performance there. I'm getting a tie in... in uh, What's the stadium? I want to say Home Depot, but that's not it. Uh, StubHub. StubHub Center is obviously a great result. As the saying goes, win your home games and tie your away games. So that's going for them at the moment. And I believe I'm finally going to put Martin in. Martin in for... Uh, what's his... For Arno, I think. So I put in Doyle. I put in Martin. And who else did I put in? Jeffrey. Jared Jeffrey. Jared Jeffrey shoots, and it's wide. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, like, I was, like I was saying, I'm kind of going through a cold here at the moment. I'm trying to get this recording in before it gets any worse, actually. 
So hopefully by next week my voice won't be affected by this stupid cold. And Willis puts it back on the f on the field, and here we go with Doyle. Do That's a foul. It's a yellow card, Raph. Yellow. And that's a yellow card for Ronald Rodriguez, which is a new player coming into the Houston Dynamo. And clearly that was a yellow. He didn't even get the ball there. I don't know what you're complaining about, Ronald Rodriguez. Robinson to Farfan. Farfan to Doyle. Doyle's going to whip in across here. No, is he? Oh, and a nice header by Rolf, but a nice save there by Willis. Doyle goes for, no, pass to Doyle, which Doyle shoots, and it goes in. <coughs> I'm actually surprised it went in, especially since you saw that uh, Willis managed to get a paw on it, or a, a hand, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> nice simple pass there by Martin, and that shouldn't have gone in. That really shouldn't have gone in. Willis should have easily handled that, but I'll take it. And the crowd goes, well, it's a 2-0 <clears throat> lead I have. And it's, I don't know if you guys noticed, but typically my leads don't extend beyond one goal. So having a 2-0 lead here is pretty exciting. And oh my gosh, I thought that was a, a PK. And luckily, the second shot goes wide. <coughs> There's only two minutes in the game. Can I close this with a 2-0 win? Houston Dynamo are attacking here in the last couple minutes of the game. With Raul Rodriguez. Raul Rodriguez goes. He whoops in across. Davis shoots. Their headers and it goes in. And there goes my clean sheet. I was so close for that clean sheet. But I guess the new goalkeeper, Galesi, won't get the clean sheet. I was, I was about to say Bill Hamid. But I'm pretty sure it's Galesi on, in the goal. And that should do it, actually. And, yeah, that's the end of the game, 2-1. A nice victory for me. <laughs> and hopefully that'll get me up on the boards again. Because sixth place is not where I want to be. I believe that's it for this game, guys. Thank you for watching, and until next time, see you all later.